and welcome to my series of short videos in which we discuss how the Arduino interacts with various electronic components. Yes, in less than 15 minutes we'll go over the basics, how they can be used, hints, tips, tricks and traps. Yes, and welcome to the second part really of the videos that deal with how to make our code better within not just the Arduino environment, of course, any C++ environment, at a sort of hobbyist level, I guess. We're not talking about commercial work here. If you're working as a paid developer, you know this and much more besides. So we're looking at hobbyists who have a grasp with, you know, code and they go, yeah, I get all this, but maybe the because they've never been taught it, they don't understand the structure of the code is probably equally important as to actually what the code does. So what I've done is knocked up a quick project here, and believe me, it only took 10 minutes to do this because it's very, very simple. I've connected one of these um, two-line displays. It's an LCD display, 16 columns wide, two uh, lines deep, via I squared C. There's an I squared C backpack, as they call it, on, on the back of this. So we only need four wires, so two for I squared C and two for power. Yeah, that's four wires. Here, this bit of coiled wire ends in this black thing here. That is, in fact, a DS18B20 temperature sensor, and we're displaying that temperature over here. I know this screen is somewhat difficult to read because, well, it never does record very well. I don't know why. I want to give a big shout out to PCB Way, PCB Prototype, the easy way. Now we're all familiar with their special PCBs, $5 for 10 pieces, but uh, you can also have FedEx PCBs, advanced PCBs, and of course you can order custom parts. Let's have a look at the CNC and 3D printing options they have. So it's 3D printing first. You upload your CAD files as you would do normally for a PCB, but then you select your materials and submit a quote request. CNC machining is pretty similar in the way you submit your files, upload your CAD files, select one of these many many different types of material you can use and of course there are also 27 different options for the surface finishing. Just look at a few of those there from anodized, brushed, bead blast, spray painting and there's more under that list as well. And finally there's sheet metal laser cutting and bending so let's have a look at that. Once again, you upload your CAD files, select the product you want to make it from, and uh, specify a few of the parameters here about whether you want threads, for example. And you can always submit your request for a quote, and it's about uh, seven to nine business days to get it done. Okay, that's PCB Way. Excellent service, good quality. Why don't you check them out now? To get this going, um, I just followed the same path that I normally would do, is to get the core thing working, right? You just throw the code together, you sort of put a few comments in maybe while you're doing it, but um, basically it's a bit of a mess. You get the thing working, you go, woohoo, done it. Yeah, but you don't walk away at that point. You go, this this looks horrendous. It's all unstructured and cluttered and bits and pieces all everywhere. Let's talk about how we can really clean up that code and make it, well, pleasurable to look at, but more to the point, pleasurable to maintain in three, six months, nine months, a year. You know, you might want to add another sensor or something. You don't want to get a bit of code that's spaghetti. You want to get a bit of code that's well structured and laid out. And you go, this is a pleasure to work with. Let's start. OK, so this is the what I'd call the prototype code. We just throw everything in and get it working, basically, without worrying about too much about the structure or anything. As you can see, there's lots of includes here at the top. Um, so that takes up a number of lines and say, OK, this bit here sorts out the um, sensor, right? So it's a reduced library, this one here, DS18B20. These three lines sort out the DS18B20 initialization and so forth. Great. Here's my button that I've got connected up. The liquid crystal um, display. I've used that particular library for years and years and years. Uh, and I'm not going to upgrade it because it works just fine the way it is. The problem with the Arduino system is that it will tell you oh there's new libraries to be upgraded for you and boards and whatever and you go okay upgrade my libraries then you find that programs you wrote two years ago no longer work because they're not backward compatible so mm, i won't be doing that anytime soon right then we have a setup yeah which is pretty normal we set up the, the serial monitor set up the pin for the push button then we set up the lcd as you can see i've already started to sort of you know group logical things together and then we have a bit of sensor initialization here and then we go okay we've done the what that's that's enough and then the loop which is just this little bit here it's, it's nothing is it really we go when you've pushed the button when you've pushed it i.e connected the button low we request a new temperature reading from this converter ds18b20 right 
uh, that takes a little while to do possibly uh, well off the top of my hands head maybe it's um, 100 milliseconds maybe uh, so we just do nothing in that time there look this is a demo bit of code all right uh, then we go and get the temperature in centigrade and we output it to the LCD screen great I mean that is it and then it goes around the loop again and goes have you pressed the button if not I'll just keep whizzing around until you do press the button brilliant I mean it's a very very small bit of code to do well a fairly useful thing isn't it to read the sensor yeah but it's it's what the way we've now got it is what I consider to be like um, a prototype bit of code yeah just to prove that we can link the sensor readings and the LCD together even though they're two entirely separate things yeah because where we have LCD in this project we could just as easily have a cloud yeah where we're going to push the sensors up to somewhere like thing speak for example so you can see what the temperatures are over a period of time okay so we've got all this and you might think well that's that's all right now I'll leave it like that but the trouble is this is a very 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 small project you start getting a bit bigger and you're going to have reams of stuff well a up the front here to sort of you know declare all these objects and add all these libraries in the setup gets more cluttered as you have to initialize various bits and perhaps get responses back we've got no wi-fi on here of course that'd be another big thing to do wouldn't it so what do we do well the very first thing we do is to say right let's logically look at our project and go how many bits of this project have we actually got that are entirely separate okay well you can see from the workbench there the first thing we have is an LCD screen right now that is entirely separate from everything else you might say well surely that's connected to the sensor well no it's not it can contain any information on this screen can't it so it's an entirely separate bit of the project and you can get this bit running all by itself uh, ditto the 18b20 ds 18b20 is another bit you can get running all by itself so that's another bit so anyway we're going to split it up into at least two bits all right and uh, the button as I say as well mm -hmm. and then of course you've got the overall overarching uh, preparation for the entire project yeah for example all the initialization routines where do they belong right let's have a look at the code the final code that I'd expect to see and uh, see how I did it now we're just back in the Arduino IDE for a bit because there's something I need to tell you we're going to put some of this code into a separate file but how do you create these new files and where do they go well on the Arduino IDE if you look at the top right hand corner uh, they see this down arrow there click that and you'll see it says new tab well new tab actually means yes you do get a new tab here in the IDE in a minute but it also means new file so if we click click that it goes okay what's the name for the new file when we've decided what we're going to call these files just click on that arrow type in a name here so for example you might have lcd.h you must have the dot h afterwards as we'll never find them okay and then you just say okay now at the top of this IDE you now see that it's got this lcd.h as well as the original one that's the original one if we click the other one it's empty at the moment where's it put that file it's put the file in exactly the same place as your sketch so you have a folder sketch it's put another file in there now called lcd.h okay so it finds it dead easy it knows where it is and it will open it up automatically the next time you open up the main code so that's how you do it in the Arduino IDE and always have done right now we spoke about creating new tabs files in effect yeah so what I've done here is created three files as you can see at the top here we have a file called lcdhelper.h sensor helper h and then something called globals oh no not globals don't worry about it now what that means is by moving some of the code into separate files look at what's happened now to the main program it's turned from that sort of mixing bowl of various ingredients all muddled together to something now that is much easier to see what's going on and uh, to debug so we've got these three includes which in fact you could also you could manage those as well to a single include if you wanted to but I put left them in there for now the setup now looks like something that uh, we can really use and understand okay we have the serial begin as standards yes but now we say initialize LCD and we just call this 
function here. We'll come on to how we've done that. And then we say initialize the sensor. We just do that there. So there's none of this individual API function calling, you know, all these funny esoteric magic number things. We get rid of all that and say, look, just, just go and do the LCD. Just go and do the sensor. And then we go, we've done. It makes it very easy to understand. And we know it works because we've done the prototyping beforehand. And should something go wrong, we can have a look at any one of these instances here of what these functions are and go, what do I need to change? Or what didn't I do that I should have done or can do in the future? OK, so that's the setup. Nice and neat. Let's uh, collapse that. Now look at the uh, the loop. What we're saying here is if um, the sensor button is low, go and get the temperature and print the temperature. That's it. And that's logically what we're doing, isn't it? People will understand exactly what this code is doing by reading that. OK, let's have a look then at uh, the first file. Remember I said in the Arduino IDE we could have that lcd.h? Well, I tend to call my files LCD helper or whatever it is, sensor helper. Yeah. For example, in my ESP32 web radio, which contains many, many files, and they're huge and long, and uh, you can see, there we are, look, there's a list um, of all the files that I got in there. And I know that if if something were to go wrong in that ESP32 web radio, I'll go, well, what is it that's not working? Is it the is it the buffering? Is it the screen? Is it the, the touch thing? Whatever it is, I can go straight to that file and have a look. Yeah, so I'm not delving about amongst the midst of Wi-Fi settings when, in fact, I'm trying to be looking at the LCD settings. OK, let's have a look at the LCD helper then and see what I've got in there. Right, the very first line says hash pragma once. Now, this is, um, strictly speaking, it's not totally portable. You might find a, comp a compiler that doesn't understand that. There's a different way to do it, but I'm not going into it now. It just means, compiler, if you've read this file once, don't do it again. I don't want you to duplicate what's in here. You read this once, and then mark the fact you've read it once, and that is it. Yes? And you need that at the top of all your included files up here. So then we say, OK, this is all to do with the LCD then. So what do we need in here? Well, we certainly need the liquid crystal library that I mentioned a while back. Uh, what's this globals h mm, that's that's over here isn't it well when you think about it in any program there are some globals that you do actually need yes because you're talking in various functions to the same thing um, so if you're going to have some globals include them first at the top however once again that globals file will have a pragma once at the top i'll have a look in a sec there's hardly anything in it uh, just to prevent it being reduplicated well, we'll skip the next bit and say, look, here's the liquid crystal. That's exactly the same line of code. We haven't changed any of this code. We've just moved it about. Here's the setup LCD with all the bits we had last time. Great. That's nice and easy. We can understand that. And here's the print print temperature in centigrade. It accepts one single parameter called as a float called current temperature. Yes, yes, yes. I don't like floats, but come on, this is a demo, right? Set the cursor, print out there's some boilerplate text, print the actual thing, printer, use printf as well because we know printf is lovely to uh, debug stuff with. And uh, that's it. Yeah, nice and easy. And that is now separate from our main. You don't see all those, those details in here, just what's going on. Now, the sensor helper is very simple uh, and similar. It's got the pragma once at the top, so we don't duplicate any of this code. Various includes, a few more includes this time. Um, this is getting the sensor working, and I'm not going to go through all this really. You can see what this is doing, and we know it works because we did the prototype, all the code all mashed in together, and it worked fine. Yeah. Right, let's just have a look at the globals, but there's not a lot in it really, is there? One, it's uh, compiler, only include this once. If you see it twice, forget it the second time. Uh, I need to include the Arduino.h, and I think. Under the new Arduino 2.0 IDE, I think we need to do that as well. I don't think it does it in the background, not unless they're going to include that somehow for you uh, behind the scenes. And I don't think they should put all this stuff behind the scenes, really. But anyway, and there's our libprintf. That's it. That's all we got in the globals. Almost not worth having, but I had to do it just to show you. Okay. So that's our three helper 
um, header files which we've included here now the purists amongst us will of course say you can't include code in header files we should just put the declarations the functions in there and then put all the code into cpp files but that just feels like a lot of work yes at work we have to do it for hobbyist use i think this is plenty good enough that's my stance anyway yeah globals sensor helper lcd helper and then just this very simple clean easily maintainable code but more than that it's you can see the woods for the trees now now there is one little thing on this entire project that we haven't really mentioned yet that's the button isn't it now i've sort of put the button in where it was originally that is as part of the sensor code in fact if we look at the sensor helper we see that uh, i've put it in here um just ignore these little com comments we haven't got to that bit yet but the uh, the pin itself the button pin three i've put into sensor but i'm thinking that's that could really be a global couldn't it so maybe that's something we should have put into the globals in here and uh, referenced it that way but i don't think it's it's critical but it's certainly something to think about yeah because when you come back to this in six months time you go i've got to change that button or do something with it you're going to be looking somewhere are you going to be looking in the sensor file mm, probably not now we were going to talk about what those double colons meant in the uh, the main for example where we have things like um well talking about the button digital read and we have sensor colon colon pin button yeah time's too short we'll talk about those next time which and certainly addresses to some extent anyway the my my loathing of the use of globals that um yeah at least this way it's it's more manageable and under control now just before we wrap up for today does the code work any better like this does your microcontroller give two figs and a hoot whether or not you've made it all nice and neat with separate files like this doesn't it care one jot i mean the answer is of course it doesn't care the code compiles to exactly the same code as what we had before yeah um, so why are we doing it and the answer is because we are trying to keep things organized rather than jumbled as you can imagine i'll get quite a few requests for help and some of the code i see well it's like that prototype code that we started off with in this little project but a hundred times worse where people have added bits in and jumbled and got conditions and it's like no wonder you can't see what's going on so this helps you split things out and get your code working or the bits that aren't working at least you can identify where that code is that's all i'm saying okay we're going to call a halt there um, if you've got any queries comments whatever please do put them down into the the comment section of the video and um, don't forget to give this a like if you found it even moderately entertaining or informative or whatever yeah um, i do hope that you really do use this sort of mechanism though for splitting out your code because it will make your code easier to maintain and understand so great stuff i hope, uh, hope i'll see you again in the next video and we'll talk about namespaces i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.